Greetings and salutations, everybody. It's Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado. Another episode of Not Only Screw Guide. Today, we're going to look at Bookworm. My Bookworm install, my Acer. I've already done the install on that, so you won't have to go through that. If you really need to see the install of it, you can go back and look in the description. I put a link to my previous video where I installed Bookworm. Actually, I installed Bullseye and then I turned it into Bookworm, but that's basically the same process. I'll show you first though where I got it from so you'll know where I'm where I'm at here. Okay, now you should see the Debian website that I got up here on my thing. Obviously you download it, you download, right? That makes sense. Debian is a completely free operating system. And I just want to show you this because this is the the final version of Bookworm they have out. I mean well final I'd say final in the sense that it's out of, it's in stable now it's not into testing anymore like it was a few months a couple of months ago when i did the uh, install of it but yeah so anyway we'll go here to download and yeah you know, now you have to know how to find these things these puppies now you can just get this one this is like the net install but I didn't do that. I went the other route. I went down here to getting Debian. Which the other installers and images. So you gotta get Debian. And then over right here, try Debian Live before installing. But I click this hybrid ISO of images suitable for writing DVDs. AMD 64. So anyway, I clicked here. Oh yeah, so you then you scroll down and then you find it here. It's all right here. So what you got then is you got cinnamon ISO files and you've got uh, some files and all stuff so you can check what you're getting. And then you got your gnome ISO here. And you got your uh, KD ISO right there. Which one I downloaded specifically. Then you got LXDE ISO here. And you've got LXQT ISO right there. These are all different types of desktops. GNOME, KDE, and all that kind of stuff. And then you got uh, Mate right there. And then you got the standard ISO. Now I'm not sure exactly what standard ISO refers to. Anyway, it's standard ISO. <laughs> I don't know what the standard desktop is, so. And then you have uh, XFC ISO right there. And that's it, pretty much. Those are the desktops you choose from on these Calamar installers, live uh, Calamar installer uh, ISOs here. So yeah, so you do download any of those ISOs you want to, and you got your uh, Debian ISO, and then for that particular desktop, then you burn it to a CD, a USB stick, which is what I did, because right now my Vento is getting too old to work as fish efficiently. I need to update it pretty bad, so yeah, we're gonna make a video about that, huh? And then, so you got those datos, so I did that. I don't know what I did there, that part. And now we're going to go down to the the computer, Nicer Spire, which is right down over here. And uh, Spacer Spire 5. Thin. Got it on a deal. Pretty good deal on it. Late earlier in the year. Not this year, but like two year, two or three years ago, I guess. It's held up pretty well. Not bad for the price you paid for, like about 400 bucks, I guess it was. 400 some dollar, 425 something like that. Paid for it. So, yeah, pretty good. So, let's go down and check the ISO out. I mean, the, the actual install. Here we are on the desktop, and it's a pretty nice, uh, one of my more favorite in my background. So, let's look at some of the other ones. See what you got on here. Now this is down, keep in mind I've installed a bunch of stuff on this. So this isn't what comes out of the box on your ISO. Okay, so we're going to look first 
at the yeah the background that's right to your desktop and wallpaper you right click on your desktop and you can go here to configure desktop and wallpaper and let me increase size of that somewhat for the moment so you can see the breadth of what i've got about darth vader now some of this is actually when i want to see i have a separate disk on this computer that has for my home directory so it, it stays there all the time you know i saw the other distros on the main disk yeah this is all the ones i had on there previously some of these i downloaded off of, on you know, get new wallpapers you can download them so i have some santa ones from christmas back last year yeah space one uh, this one, I got some from the uh, uh, space station. Got some from other Debians. So it's got a lot of Debian ones, Homeworld, all that stuff. Got spaceships, Sci Fi City spaceship. There's one I'm currently using. So got this one, which has a but uh, they refer to it as a pig spaceship on it. <laughs> Ten stars, so yeah. You get all those by typing in stars or planets or space, and then there. I'll show you how you work that real quick. Just I'll give you an example. I can get some uh, on a waterfall picture. Is up here, you go up here. Oh, look, the waterfall right there. <laughs> I don't have anything, but uh, I'm gonna go to the lights wallpaper. Pretty good. So you go here and you go see waterfalls. And then it searches for them. I think you have to move the S on there. Because of like waterfall. They help us spell it, right? Wouldn't it? Yeah. So, anyway. It's loading up some. So, you have all these waterfalls you can get, and you get all these main waterfalls. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can when you have your time to do that on your install. But anyway, I'm going to install it. And then it goes and says it's there. So after you get X out of this, sometimes you have to get out of here before you can. You have to like log out and log back in. I had to do that last time. Before it actually showed what I installed, but in this one it showed up right there. So I want to use it, I just click on it and hit apply. And there's the waterfall background I can have. How'd you just do that? I wonder. Would you like to know? Actually, I can show you that in a minute in settings. So uh, let's see. Speaking of settings, let's go down here to settings, and we'll we'll go to there, and we'll go down here to the bottom. Software about system. So you can see what we got on here. AD Plasma version five point two seven point five. Framework version five point one zero three point zero. QT version 5.15.8. Kernel version is 6.1.0-9 AMD64. 64 bit. Graphic platform is Wayland. Processors, it's got four. It's more about the computer itself here. Four AMD Ryzen 3 3200U with Radeon Bay Mobile TFX. It's got 9.68 bytes of RAM, basically 10. <laughs> graphics processor is AMD Radeon Vega 3 graphics. Manufacturer Acer, Aspire A515-43, and system version is volume 1.11. Let's 
show serial number on here. We'll worry about that. Show more information. I think it was up here, though. I've been here in window management. Workspace papers on the table. Okay, there's my activities. Desktop effects. Desktop effects. That'd probably be it. You know what I'm yeah, so you have this right here. Closed windows fall into pieces. It goes to pieces. <laughs> yeah, so you got that. You got fading pop ups, and you have all the stuff you can set. You can set track mouse, snap helper, mouse click animation inverter, which I don't have any of that set. Anyway, yeah, you got all that set. So you got all these settings, normal, normal settings for KDE, but that's where you find that information. You want that? Also, I installed Bismuth on here, so it shows all that. Well, it's a long ways down on there. So anyway, uh. -huh. Yeah, so anyway, you got that. Now, let's see what else we're going to do. Memory usage. Uh, everyone wants some memory usage. So, I got Kitty installed on here, I think. Yep, I got Kitty installed. And we're going to go to HTOP, which I'm pretty sure is installed on here. It's not found. Oh, I didn't install HTOP on here. Bad me, bad me. <laughs> so, anyway, suit. I did install Nala, though. Pretty sure. So, Nala. Which is a wrapper for apt for those who don't know so now but it works pretty much like so it's yeah so each time doesn't take a long time and all to install so it's there each job now we run it and there you go so it looks like the memory is cpu is about Running about three percent or so, two to three percent, depending on what I got going on. And I've got a one point three two gigs being used on out of ten gigs. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, KD's kind of like that. It expands when you got more space in memory, and it reduces down the size when you got less space in memory. So if I had the four four gigabytes on here or two gigabytes on here. It would be a lot smaller than it shows now, but it's got 1.32 gigs on there so far. Not too shabby. Okay, so we looked at memory, now we're looking at the F stat file real quick so you can see how I've had to set up. I'll go back here to my kitty. Cow. Pseudo. Vault ID. And then it gives you all the USB UUID numbers for each of the things on here. So you see here's, this is my main one here. This is swap, swap file here is my main one. Swap file over here, it's got DFAT type. And this is the main one here, the boot sector, if I'm not mistaken. You got root here. That's true. Now, it's originally contained home. So, what I did was I had to get this. My. Let's see. My home right here. Label my home. This is the main one. And it's SDA1. Repetition on there. STB, STB is the one where my backups are at. So, anyway, I got this. I just copied this number here for my home directory. Plugged in my FSTEP file and away we went. And it's all XT4. So I did it then in nano. And uh, let's see. ACC. FSTEP. And there you go. There's where I put them in. I put them right here, home. And put that in there for that one. And I put this back up so I connect and I put no fail on the end of them so that I could just so that that prevents it from having a connection fit if you don't have it connected because they're external drive connected by a USB port right now. So 
yeah. So no pill keeps it from having uh, hiccups. <laughs> and going, I don't know how to use drive. I don't know to do. I know. That kind of thing. So, yeah. Take a picture of that if you need to or whatever. Take a look at it and see what it does. See what I added there. Home and these two that I put in the back. And I have to create these. And mount the, you have to create these uh, directories in here manually for order to install these on there. So, yeah. Some rival, we don't care. <laughs> I don't need to write on here. I best I don't. So, yeah, so there you go. There's that, the FZF file. Yeah, we're gonna improve programs on you now. I want to check on something because I want to check on the um these are my my uh scripts I've created for myself basically. There are various scripts to do various things. Some of them are not complete and some of them are, are so some of them don't work, some of them don't work at all, or some of them work. Most of them will do something though. Most of them do something. But uh, when I use mostly, I got multiple versions of some things, like all these install things. I used to have an Arch installer, Debian installer, Fedora, a Fedora installer, and a Solus installer whenever I use it. Now I combine it into one thing, just uh, my pack, install my packages. So I'm going to go check in there and make sure I got what I want in there. Okay, and this is kind of an all-purpose installer no matter what distro you're on, almost no matter, because some distros of course are in here. I put the most common ones, but of course some of the young, more common ones probably aren't in here, but you could add them if, if you wanted to, if you know the package and all that kind of stuff. So here's my params I haven't set to install in here. I don't know that I've written this before, but if I have and it's all installed on here, then it'll it'll uh, skip it. So, and we got these things: Cello Player, Krita, Inkscape Shortcut, and I get Lab. Uh, Libre Wolf Community be installed. Now I can take that one out. Actually, it's already installed, so it shouldn't install it. So I leave it there. Any of these I didn't want to install on here, I could take out if I wanted to. We just installed a top. Neofetch probably isn't installed. Nano is installed. DFTP is installed. Flatpak. Gscan2 PDF. That's a, my uh, scan thing. Scanner. PDU and PD. Cantata. LibreOffice. The only thing I'm not sure I want to install is MPD because I think I already I think I've already missed that and saw Cantata on there if I'm not mistaken. So what I do then is I can Copy that. Should have asked out of the and put it in a whole list. Which I'll just put here is that V and P D. Right there. It checks out what what the uh, what distro you're on by the package manager you have on there. So it'll go through all these lists and the last ones the last one that works is what I'll use. So go through there. And then down here you get the case that goes by distro, which is what package manager you have. If you got Git app or Nala. It will use that. Now you notice I don't use apt on here just because apt is not made for inter non-interactive use. So you use apt get on for that function. And so 
then you add, it basically bring, makes functions to one function to do updates, one function to do an install, whatever program you, you specify. And so there's Nala. Also a set font directory. Some of those are different, so I set font directory as two type. Pac-Man. Yay. Yummy. DNF. And you notice know, DNF also does it installs the uh, RP infusion directories in there. It doesn't have them in there already. And then you have sudo DNF upgrade. does upgrades in the package list on that. Now, and I don't know about OpenSUSE. Yeah, OpenSUSE would be on the RPMs, wouldn't it? The old package for, for Zipper, there's their SUSE. Then it does he install the programs? So it goes through the list of programs that you install. It'll install each one. Of, it'll go through and install each one of those if it's there. If it's already on installed on there, it'll go nope, 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 nope. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. And done. Install programs from Flint. So now it installs a flat package. Name is Flatpak Rehab, so there's where the name is install it on the on the, up there. If it's in there, it's install it if it wasn't there already. Then it enables Flatpaks here. Then it'll go through this, it'll check to make sure that whether it's got the the Flatpak Rehab successful. And it'll check to make sure that whether the Flatpak repo is successful. It's got this complicated thing here because I had to figure out how to get a short name for it. That was a bigger program file. So what it'll do is it'll take the like LibreWolf dash community or something. It'll take LibreWolf out of there. So it'll go through there and it'll pull each one out from the name out from each one and check to see if it's the last one. So the last one is going to assume that the short name is always the last one on the end of that io.gitlab. Uh, LibreWolf type thing. Sometimes you get strange things out of that, but usually they're almost always the last one. So if, you, if it's long for some weird reason, it's got more than five in there, you need to put a six or seven or whatever in there. So anyway, make sure that make sure that it's not only installed from, from the the repositories also check to make sure it's not already installed for a flat pack previously or it actually does an installation by flat pack so you can see all that there and there you go and yeah clear and then in print spaces print the uh, the uh, file tells you a summary of what what it did. The summary of what it did. So I think we got to how we want to set. Let's run the puppy and see what it does, huh? I'm not sure what it's going to do, but it'll do something. <laughs> see, I, don't know, I think it did. I change. I think it changed something in the. Let's just make sure. Okay, so now install. My packages and then it install, starts installing things see several are installed there and installing something else it's going pretty long pretty fast isn't it yeah it's got a decently fast CPU on it so not no not small potatoes anyway some of these like G scan to PDF are more involved. Mm 
Uh, I thought I had it said, but no one saw this. Yeah. I like to say you looks will install that. Apparently I haven't installed, so I like to say Lloyd is a is a is a video player basically. And it's nice to me. See I don't know, maybe I found weird because mine looked local. I uh, know I said so in celluloid, celluloid is J there. So I'm installing celluloid by flash, so I pulled that out properly. Okay, now I'll install it when I... No, we don't need to install that. Because it's like, I already got it there. So here's your summary. Install DP, GFTP. And it says it's installed successful, and it's already installed. NeoFetch's already installed. Light Tub's already installed. Flatpak's already installed. And installed G-Scan F2 FPDF. And that was successful. Key's already installed, so it skipped over MPD. MPD was successful. Looks like I installed it anyway. Forgot to take that out of there. Cantata's already installed. LibreOffice is already installed. Yep, yep, yep. Flat pack repo was successful. Setting up set up a flat pack, flat pack repo was successful. And uh, program studio is already installed in five five flat packs to uh, OBS basically. So I already installed that for some reason. So I'll say all about flat pack. I usually use my backup computer. I used to use used to do this for recording videos on, but now. Since I have my framework, I like that better, obviously. So, case for us, raw. So, we may install and say hello about Pi, and that was successful. Creed is already installed, Inkscape is already installed, Shotcuts are already installed, LibreWolf 5, Community by Flatpak. Now, you can put whatever programs you want in here to install either your Flatpaks or, or your uh, thing in here. And this script, by the way, is on my, my uh, website. I'll put in the link for that down in the description as well. Just so you know where to find it if you want it. So, that's that part of it. Now I'll take a check on the programs. Let me install them and see what all seems what's there. What versions of them we have. Alright. Okay. I do have Libre up already installed here. Contrary, I didn't find it probably because I was looking probably for Libre dash community. Didn't find that, so there you go. And so, but I installed this one by because I had installed by five packs originally, but I was like, and this thing that didn't seem to work quite right. Then some settings in it that didn't work for some reason. So I installed it by the repository, by adding the repository to it and all that kind of stuff instead. And so, uh, here's LibreWolf, which I use a lot. So I haven't even set bookmarks on here. I haven't imported my bookmarks. So. But I think I set up so I got YouTube. You know, this thing there, it happened. New test of Cybertruck price movements orders. So we get your Cybertruck now, huh? So anyway, we'll look see what version of Firefox installed on here though. So we're, we're, yeah, we're going to look and see what versions we have here. Firefox. There it is. It's using 102.12.0 ESR. 64 bit is what's installed on here out of the box. This Firefox was installed out of the box 
on this, but I solidly very well because I use that more frequently. And I do Firefox. So there you go. That's what I have in that. Now we'll go down here to our thing. We'll look at here. Feldman is Kate Advanced Text Editor. It's used a lot of people like it a lot for for text editing for uh, for scripts and stuff. I usually use Nano because it's it is mine on the command line anyway. So there you go. That's what I got. But Kate is a good a good text editor. If you want to use that, it's perfectly fine. It's a good text editor for using for creating bash files and stuff like that yeah yeah education you got golden dictionary multi-format dictionary libre office math makes you wonder what exactly this is i'm not sure i've never used this before welcome to golden dictionary start with okay so you need to set it up so i can't use that now graphics have a lot in here because I installed my own stuff. Plus, I think they put some in here, like GIMP. But I, I've not really gotten used to using GIMP yet. So I tend to use uh, Inkscape and Krita mostly for my stuff that I do. I just know it real well, so I use it, <laughs> and it works for me. So there you go. Anyway, GIMP's one a lot of people use, so it comes with this, obviously. There's one we installed. Uh, G-Scan to PDF. WinView is a image viewer. Image Magic Color, that's another image type viewer. Also, you can do a lot of other things with it, obviously. It's a more of a command line function than anything else, I think. Inkscape is a vector graphics editor. Contrast, I'm not familiar with this. Contrast checker. Hmm. Let's explore that some point. Krita, that's one of my favorites. I use that. I don't remember if this was installed out of the box or whether it was or whether it was uh when I installed installed on myself. LibreOffice came with it, I think, pretty much. Got two entries for the drawings. I'm not sure why. One may be... Hopefully, I mean, I'll have... I don't think I installed it. Ocular. Document Viewer. So, I didn't view PDFs and things like that you might have on there. On your thing, the internet. Yeah, GFTP, which I like to use better than than the common one that VS people use, which is FileZilla. FileZilla is good, but I like GFTP better. Simpler program and doesn't have as much settings and stuff to deal with, I guess. LibreOffice, I already talked about that. Aggregator. Feed Reader, which I don't really use those anyway, so. Contact Print Theme Editor. Contact the editor. Firefox, we are look at Firefox web browser, I guess. This is ESR and this is regular. I don't know. <laughs> I know it's regular on here too. I know I had two of them. She could be when I saw one of them accidentally. Or, I don't think so. I don't need to install Firefox or anything. KD Connect. And SM. That's a pretty good program. I like that. And your KML header theme editor, KML client, mail client, Conquer web browser, and KTNF open on connect device by KD Connect, PIM data importer, sieve editor, filter email by sieve scripts, apparently, Telegram desktop. I installed that uh, by a flat pack basically. So, yeah. So, anyway, you got that multimedia. There's Cantata. Uh, now, this is on 
this old leftover from uh, uh, Open Suits, actually, where I'm, when I use the uh, a Anion, 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 however you say Anion OS, which used to be Micro OS. Uh, and it's just a leftover from that. So, yeah. Now, this has, but this is what I usually use is the regular Kentana, because this one will give you error if you try and flag it on, on Debian, of course, because it's not there, actually. See, launching Katata on Tweed failed. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> Just want to hear that. A dragon player, which I've never used that before, but it's apparently a video player. Music player, Juke. Not used that before, so it obviously came with the default out of the box. will be a studio I installed, Shotcut I installed, Strawberry, which is my music player of choice right now, Strawberry. And you say, why do you have Cantana? You saw that too. Well, the main reason I saw is this accesses my server out of the living room. My Debian server out of the living room. Music off of that one through MPD, which is installed on Debian. And I access it over the internet like that. So like, if I play that, uh, I thought I had this up, I guess I don't have, well, I just thought I would have to have it up, wouldn't I? Yeah, we'll cancel that for now. So, yeah, and then Sorrow Strawberry obviously takes music off my computer here, local computer. That's why I have two on there. Although this one was just on there already and I didn't know anything about it, so I haven't used it. OBS and Shotcut, yeah. Office. Draw. They got two draws in here, two calcs here. Yeah, some got double duplicated. I have a feeling maybe when, when I installed LibreOffice. That one that came with it, one that I installed by. I have to go back in and install it. Uninstall LibreOffice Writer. All oh, those put LibreOffice out of the out of there because I think it installed it twice, basically. Get confusing. Science and Math. LibreOffice Math. Settings. Just more into your settings stuff. Mosaic setup. Set up Mosaic engine. I'm not sure what Mosaic is actually now that I think about it. But input method. Set keyboard input method. High best preferences. Navigation wizard. And Anthony dictionary editor. There's your settings and you got your system stuff. That's where your, your kitty's on here and console will be on here and GW package installer, Dolphin discover, all those good fun things. Okay, it's not down here in their, their thing, utilities. It's got K mouth, speed synthesizer front end. Mouse tool, KMag, KFind, keyboard, keyboard layout viewer, KCal, Kate, emoji selector, ARC, archiving tool basically. And multilingual terminal, I guess you can set it for different languages or something. Spectacle with screenshot, sweeper. And tie X terminal, which is a special terminal, basically, apparently. You got all those, all those utilities and things you can do there. wonder if it's got a uh, synaptic package manager on here. I don't think it does. More of a GNU thing, I think, so. Menu editor, multilingual with terminal. Okay, so you got all that. Now here you have your applications, places. Go here and you go to places on your laptop, desktop, documents. Either you can tell it to sleep or hibernate or restart or shut down, or you can go to the other options here. 
Just log out or switch user or lock the screen. System settings. You had Discovered Software Center. Dolphin Winter File Manager. Firefox Web Browser. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, here notifications. There's a golden dictionary. I guess we open it up so it's open. And plug the thing in there. Clipboard contents, volume, Bluetooth. There's your most recent device backup. Display configuration. Your network connection. And the icons, which have a few. Kitty Connect, Lock Key Status, Printers, Vaults. Night center control updates, notifications, better brightness, time and day right there, and your peak of desktop function, which you pull it down. I guess the peak looks like you have Firefox open over here. You hold it down, peak. Okay, so you can bring it back. You just click on it and it takes it away. You peek the desktop. Oh, oh look at this. Look at this. And you can go over here and click it back and bring it back. Whatever you want to do on it. So, Dolphin File Manager. Okay, see what version of Dolphin we have on here. Oh, it's up here 22.12.3. Here and check it out first, alrighty. Bookworm, I really like Bookworm, and it's a nice, nice functioning system. It's stable. It works best. It's got, it's got a more advanced kernel than I had. I think it had 5.10 on, on Bullseye. So, definitely improvement in the kernel. Of course, by the time this thing gets older than five years old or whatever, it'll probably be like, you know, old kernel 6.1. Be an old kernel by then. Yeah, it's got real nice uh, wallpapers. It's always helpful to have. It's one thing I always like about KD, you always get good wallpapers. Even if the wallpapers stink on the on the distro itself, you always pull in some ones you like. So that's my review of it. We'll call it a day. All right. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed before. Hit the like button if you like this video. And may the Linux force be with you. Bye.